What's going on everybody? Cody from Motorcycle MD. Welcome to another video. In this one we'll be tearing down the bottom end of this 79XL185S. If you have not watched any videos yet on this series, make sure you go back. We unlocked this motor completely. You know you want to be set free. Uh-oh. Found what we thought was some lake matter or debris inside of the cylinder. Oh my gosh. Guys. Crack that open and now we're going to take apart the bottom end to continue on this voyage of bringing this motor back up to where it needs to be to make it a rideable bike. If you are new to riding and you like to work on your bike rather than break it, in the description below there's a course called the Wrench to Ride course, 40 plus videos on how to take care of your bike properly on a consistent basis, things that you would probably pay someone else to do. Me and my buddy Matt from How To Motorcycle Repair put a series of videos together totally free to the public to hopefully put a damper on people ruining their bike. Otherwise, we have a lot to go through with this bottom end, so let's get to it. But before we begin, I do want to let you guys in on a little backstory of the content that you're about to see. I would like for you to imagine yourself recording content, maybe tearing a motor down, a process that you really only want to do once, and recording the process along the way, talking through it, giving some cool information about it, maybe some new tips or tricks, some people who have never done it before. Then you sit down to edit that content and realize that two and a half hours of footage has zero audio whatsoever. Poof, and that's what happened. I'm not mad. Not mad. But being the creative mind that I am, knowing that people like to enjoy content that is fast and shifting and moving and noises and all the stuff that brings all of your senses to the forefront of your computer screen, this one will lack a little bit of that. So I tried the best that I could to do a little bit of an audio over, over this content. I hope you guys enjoy it. It was an absolute bear to sit through that much content that had zero audio whatsoever and to make sense of it all. Tell me what you think in the contents. The show must go on. I'm not gonna not show me taking the bottom end apart. So here it is. Enjoy. All right, guys. So I'll be a narrator this evening for the lower half of this XL185 being torn down into. First thing I want to do is make sure that it is shifting all the way through. That was one thing I was unable to check because the chain was locked on it, and it does shift all the way through very cleanly, no problems, which is great. Let's go ahead and grab this clutch cover off. I would make um, zip gun sounds and uh, fun cracking noises of things coming apart, but I can't. So let's make sure we bag and tag everything that comes off. It's the best way to stay organized throughout anything that you're doing. Usually some oil does come out of this motor, so or any motor really, when you pop the cases off. That's why you'll always notice in the manual they'll say oil amount for oil and filter change and oil amount for disassembly. Two different amounts. I do want to make sure that nothing else is going to fall off while I pull that case off and look at the rust on that shift set, um, spindle, whatever you want to call it, shifting arm. There is rust there and there is tons of crud on the bottom of that case. That's likely what we'll see inside this motor as well. That's just what happens. Want to redo an old vintage motorcycle? That's what you'll find in the motor. Here I am just trying to make sense of the kickstarter mechanism. Spring washer, I had one backwards and I just wanted to see if there was a a locating dot or something on this which I did find on the back side and I wanted to see if that was going to line up on like a master spline because a lot of times in the motor that's how they line stuff up and I did find a little dot on there it could be for the kickstarter but likely not it's probably for that gear which we had in right so that's where the washer goes pull that back off make sure we bag and tag everything now let's go ahead and crack open this oil sling like an oil pressure override in that center with the spring um, those actually have a tendency of failing on the XL250s, believe it or not. That spring would uh, wear out and it would not allow oil to bypass and it would seize the, lock, the top end of the motor up. So, fun fact of the day. Usually you'll find some crud and crap inside of this thing. This wasn't too bad. Um, motor has relatively low miles, but there is a special uh, little socket for this on both this and the clutch hub. We'll just lock it, knock it loose, not lock it loose. And that is a gear that I use to kind of keep things from spinning. Just found it around the shop. Not worried about having the correct tool for that. And we'll pull off this pressure plate right here. This is the push rod system of the clutch that we saw that rust part inside the case. Make sure this bearing is spinning freely. And I also go, want to go ahead and pop that out. Likely replace it. I don't think it felt too bad, but I can't remember. Pull these springs off. We need, now we have to get that lock nut there. And to be honest, you guys have heard me talk about uh, clutches that are stuck. 
I probably could have zipped that center nut off without having to put this pressure plate back on, but this holds the clutch pressure on it to keep it from spinning, because sometimes if the clutch is healthy and you try to unlock that, then just the center part will spin and you're just chasing your tail. So put a little bit more pressure back onto it, the special tool can fit down inside of there. Crack it loose. I wanna also double check the orientation of that nut. There's all kinds of conspiracy about which ways these lock nuts go on these old bikes. And as you saw, this motor's never been into this far, as I would know, and the rounded part faced down towards the motor. Look at the corrosion on the face of that hub. Delicious. All right, we'll pull this off fully. There is a washer behind that. It's probably orientated with an outside marking, like a beveled washer, like a lock washer, in other words. Bag and tag, make sure it's all labeled. This has an uh, orientated washer as well, beveled. It's kind of, kind of like a, um, I think it has an outside marking on it, but it is specific to how it goes in. And look at this delicious clutch pack. I hope you guys were hungry. Look at that. Disgusting. There is a thrust washer right there. But it can be cleaned up, but that clutch is 100% useless. There is our backing hub. Look at that little bit of rust on the back. I was stoked about that too. Pretty clean, pretty clean. Here I'm showing the oil passages for this thing. Um, you see that little oil jet right there. It's gonna screen down the right side of that, go into the case on this side, and it's gonna make its way out into that center part that we were looking at before with the little spring I was telling you about in the center of that little centrifugal oil sling that we already took off. Just wanted to see the oil orientation and how that flows in there. Here's our oil pump gear right here. I also wanted to check to see if this had a marking on it as well. Sometimes they'll counterbalance those or they'll add a counterbalance weight behind those on newer bikes, but this one, they don't have it. And I didn't see any markings, which means that this thing would fit back on the spline no matter which way I put it, which is great. One less thing to worry about when you're going back together, but this is the oil pump drive. See, it's a gear driven oil pump running straight off of that. We're gonna look a little bit at the shift system. So we have that shift plate right there. You can kind of see how it functions. It's kind of hard for me to do this with two hands and not have the motor move, but you can kind of see how that works back and forth. You have to be kind of spinning that counter shaft a little bit or the main shaft. And you can see how that whole shift drum works. There's a bunch of little mechanisms in there. Same stuff's been being used for hundreds of years on motorcycles. There's our circ clip, a little spring right behind that. To keep that in place. Here's our plate right here. Not too bad, not rusted. It's coated in oil, which is great. Kind of see how, how that works. There's our cam for the drum that we're looking at right there, a little star thing. It's called a shift drum cam. Let's go ahead and pull the oil drive off. It has a cover on it, maybe a gasket. I can't remember. Uh, no. All right, so let's go ahead and pull our center little pinion out for the gear. That drives the oil pump behind the plate that we can't see right now. We'll kind of open this up here in a minute. Do want to make sure we're using some JIS screwdriver bits on these. It's easy to strip out. These came out relatively easy, which is great. I also use manual impacts all the time on Phillips head screwdrivers, or Phillips head bolts, sorry. There's our oil pump right there. Two little O-rings behind there. This has a plate on the back. It's pretty, it's so basic how these things work. It's crazy. If I can, I'll try to um, grab a, quick video of explaining it better than I can. I think they're called trochoid pumps or something like that. And there's actually specs for clearances in between the two gears or a gear pump, whatever you want to call it. There's probably 10 names for it, but I'm just going to open it up real quick and see how bad or good it is. One thing I noticed was that little tit kind of hanging off there. And I just want to make sure that I'm orienting that right. I'm trying to pay attention. I don't have a manual for this thing at the moment. I can get one, but I just haven't yet. I'm just trying to keep mental notes. It's the best thing you can do going into something like this. All right, let's go ahead and pop this open. There'll be a little gasket underneath here usually. Yes, there is, cool. And there's surfaces that you can check throughout all this. The manual will explain it in detail, but there's a surface right there. It's got a little wear on it, nothing crazy. I'd run that. Here's a little star gear right here. As this kind of spins around, you kind of see that oil getting pushed out of there. It's a low and high end of this and kind of forces oil in and out of it as it spins around. One's fixed, one of the ones moves around it. It's kind of cool. Um, but all of these surfaces, they all have specs. You know, you're looking for wear on all of those little arms of the gear around the surface of that outer band. 
as well as inside the pump body itself. But basic stuff still being used today. Let's go ahead and grab this D10 off the shift stuff. This part actually um, is uh, it's a high wear item on a lot of old bikes. If you have a shift problem, you can look here. That little wheel can wear out. You can't replace just the wheel or anything. I'm sure someone can weld something. But that stuff wears out all the time. They get flat spots in them and they won't shift right. But um, yeah, that's a little detent arm or stopper arm. It kind of puts pressure on the cam for the drums. When you shift and you hear that click, it's kind of moving around like that. There is a little marker for that cam on the shift drum that pin does come out very important not to lose that or to get that in wrong that would not be good this stuff's gonna clean up pretty well i'm pumped about it it's a little love and looks brand new again all right let's go ahead and pull the spindle out all the way should just run straight to the case. Sometimes these have little case bushings installed. We do want to look for any scoring on this. These can wear out and these can flop around like crazy. I've seen old 450s where these things are just, or the case is shot like where I'm pointing at right there. You can put bushings in them, but once that, I mean, it's just metal on metal. Once that aluminum goes, it's kind of shot, but I've seen people put bushings there. I've done it before even. But yeah, just looking for any wear on there. The splines in this thing is beautiful on that shift shaft, so I'm just glad. Um, let's go ahead and keep pushing forward though. All that muck at the bottom. Just like we saw in that clutch case cover. It's just, it's gonna be everywhere. I did want to spend a little bit of time just cleaning this case half up while we're here. Gasket removal is always the lamest part, but this is pretty satisfying. You know, just grab a little 3M scotch Bright pad that attached to your drill and just make a new surface, make it nice and clean. It's just, you may be saying, you're throwing all that stuff inside the bearings, what are you doing? I do not care. I'll be flushing this thing out completely in a parts wash, going through all the bearings and all that stuff. So it doesn't matter anymore. So now it's time to get this uh, stator cover or rotor cover off per se. A couple of sensors I think I had to get out of the way. Um, but all in all, it's just bolts, just a bunch of bolts. And getting that sprocket cover off can be important too. Or that sprocket, sorry, that front sprocket. We already looked at this stuff. We broke the motor loose. If you haven't seen that video actually, you should look at it. Cracking this motor loose, this motor was locked completely if this is the first time you've seen this. Um, and we just broke it open and found uh, what was appeared to be the bottom of a lake inside the cylinder. And we got that out, got the cylinder off, and uh, we're just gonna go through the whole thing now because might as well. Here's our tensioner system. Okay, there's that black guide that we saw that reached up to the top of the head. I'm just going to pop this black cover off the tensioner adjuster right here. Or cam chain adjuster, whatever you want to call it. Try not to tear it. It's always a tricky part. Nice elbow. Kind of see our lower crank gear for the cam chain. Reaches up to the top. There's our little chain stopper right there. You'd be surprised at how many of those stoppers that I see in the bottom of cases on new bikes, dirt bikes, all that stuff. But there's our tensioner system right there. We're gonna crack this loose real quick. So we're gonna crack the lock nut loose and then you'll see it kind of spring up, I believe, because there's spring tension upwards on it already. You can kind of see how this works as it bends this arm is going to push up on that little square block that right behind my, my right hand finger. It's going to push up on that and it bends the guide which puts more tension on the cam chain. And I bet I was explaining this so well too in the video just full of myself. But you can see how it's important to like set the motor at the right time so there's slack in the chain so when you make that adjustment and you crack that lock nut loose it can kind of jump up a little bit and add the tension that it needs. It can't, it's kind of hard to over tension it. But easy system, it's used on a lot of the old TRX, it's used on so many motors, on a lot of the older stuff for sure. The newer tensioner systems are a little bit more sophisticated, but these work great. While we're at it, we'll just throw some safety wire around that uh, Woodruff key, make sure we don't lose that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, just get the system out of there, out of the way, off the case. There's our chain stopper right there kind of built into each other. There's the spring for the tensioner of that arm. Keep track of that stuff. And we can just finish taking apart this guide system right here. If 
did see a little wear on the guide, but I'd run it. All right, there's our cam chain. Get that out of there. We'll replace that for sure. Let's grab the rest of these case bolts. Split this thing open like a coconut. Make sure we check both sides because sometimes I'll do a run through bolt on the other side that you can crack a case if you're not aware of. But grab this front sprocket. Already loosened it up, thank goodness. Was a little bit of a fight, but just gotta get it off there. So we can split the case fully. That's our counter shaft. And we gotta crack this thing open. Try to go from both ends, and there we see it lift, which is awesome. I'm trying to leave that counter shaft in there. So I keep kind of tapping that thing down um, as we pull it apart because I just don't want to lose any of the special washers or anything and get them out of place. So just leave that in that back half of the case if we can. If I wanted to, I could probably just rip that whole case right off there, but like I said, you just want to keep everything intact if you can. It's the easiest way. Especially if you have no idea what you're looking at the other side for any of you attempting this in the first time. And there we have it in all of its glory. Oh, it's beautiful. Super thick, gritty dirt is what, is what it felt like. Just junk. You can see that washer right there. Trying to make sure I know which hole it went into. I think it went into that one. I'm not to double check the manual on that. Probably came off of the, I think that gear on the bottom bottom right. I couldn't remember. <laughs> this is me trying to figure it out. That's what happens, man. A small little wash, and you're like, wait, where did that go? I'll figure it out. Oh, maybe it went there. Sweet. And then I found a second washer in the bottom of the case, and I was like, oh, well, maybe that one should go. There. We'll have to double check that stuff for sure. But yeah, man, just gross. Gross, gross, gross. But there it is. Transmission. Shift drum. Maybe a counterbalance in the back. I'm not sure. Or a Kickstarter gear or something. Or crank Look at that. Spinning like it's supposed to. So satisfying. But it sounded like marbles. <laughs> I wish the audio was here for this, but it sounded like marbles. One was actually smooth as butter, but the other one, it was gritty. And I have to clean that crap out, you know, and make sure that that's... I'm just going to replace them. I'm going to replace the bearings. Um, there's a lot of rust on the bottom of the crankshaft. That looks fun. I'm going to get some of this big gasket stuff off real quick. You see that little gold thing on the shift drum? That's our neutral switch land. That's what grounds the neutral switch for us. All the way inside the motor. Imagine if that broke. You're just like, well, I don't have any neutral anymore. Or a neutral indicator, for that matter. But this is probably as far as we're going to take this video right now. Going into the transmission is a whole other story. I'm going to leave that stuff right, right where it's at. And I'm um, probably going to work on getting this gasket material off. But that's the bottom of the case, guys. We've made it to the bottom. See that there's our crankcase breather system right there. A lot of people don't realize you start undoing that crankcase breather hoses and trying to make your bike look cool and... Maybe put a little filter on it or running it without one and crud gets inside of the motor that's not fully capped off there is a way for it to get out all right guys so that will wrap that one up but i have a list of stuff i need to do the cases the transmission parts all of those stuff that you saw needs to be in a parts washer i need to spend time cleaning that stuff out i need to take the crankshaft to a buddy of mine so he can press the bearings off as well as that bottom and crank gear i have brand new ones to go on that he's going to see if that rod is serviceable i think it is but i'm sure he'll let me know if it's not so once we get all the majority of the crud off of this thing we gotta start replacing some bearings and some seals and going through and probably hand wiping down a lot of these parts. And I also got some cool products to use as far as painting the motor, cause that's what I am going to do. So if you enjoy this type of content, make sure you like the video, maybe subscribe to the channel even. Plenty more content to come out on this bike and many others. Until next time, Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys some quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. Ride safe out there, later.